Hey everybody, it's Cecilia from Part on Farm. <clears throat> I wanted to give you a quick update today on the sweet potatoes and just kind of keep you in the loop as to what I'm going to do. So you can see this, this one is doing extraordinarily well and is, I don't know, this one's probably 10 inches long, which really is longer than you should let it get on your potato but I kept putting it off until I could make a video and this is what happens. <laughs> so, um, but you can see the really well-developed root systems in some of these. Even this one doesn't have top growth yet, but it has really well-developed root systems. So I'm going to let that keep going. Um, and then this one you can see has a little bit of growth on it. <clears throat> so these ones that I just showed you, three of the four have really well developed you can see all the roots in there root systems and these are the ones that I had in a south facing window and they weren't even directly in the windowsill they were actually kind of on a stand just in the corner of the room near a south facing window and these are the potatoes that I had under the grow lights and you can see I have several of these three of the four there's really no roots to speak of and the only growth I have is on this one so and it's small it's small growth I also if you watch my previous videos um someone commented and suggested that I try this method which has a sweet potato half buried in soil and then it's moist and you can see that it is moist but there's really no roots developing and that's both under the grow light and this one's identical um and this one is in the ooh, there's a gnat <laughs> um it's trying to get me this one is was in the window so <clears throat> so here's what I'm going to do when your sweet potato slips get not this big smaller um I would say five inches or so you're going to go ahead and just nicely take them off so I'm going to take these three biggest ones here off okay and we'll leave the rest of them to grow some more but these ones I'm going to start to root in another jar because it is not anywhere near time to plant out where I am now so I like to use a tall jar and just set, set them in there and I actually put a little bit more water than I meant to in here so I'm actually gonna pour some water back out um, the advantage of using a tall jar is that it'll keep them from tipping over. Generally, I try to use a tall jar with sort of a narrow uh, lid so that it helps them stand up. And so then I just put them in there just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead. I actually really want this one to be propped up a little bit better because all of its leaves are in the water. There we go. Um, and we just leave it sit like this in the windowsill. What I'm going to do, because it is getting to be sort of crunch time for me for starting seedlings, is I'm actually going to take the one sweet potato that I had under the grow light that, lights that has roots and place it in the windowsill as well. Because really, I just need the grow space. And right now, I don't see any benefit at all to keeping them under the grow lights. The A few weeks ago, these were pretty close to the same size, but now the growth is so much different that I really think it will be better having them under in the windowsill. The only difference that I will say is this one has more developed leaves than these slips which is really the only benefit. But if my slips don't really grow, 
and start to shoot up, it's hard for me to get them into another jar to get them rooted. So that's my plan. I am, this one's getting really sort of squishy. Um, I think it's rotting. So I'm actually going to pitch both of these because I feel like, well, you saw the gnat come flying out of it. Um, I feel like it's time for those to go. So that's the update a little bit on the sweet potatoes. It is really getting to be the time where I need to start. I have all my tomato, excuse me, tomato plants started that I will need for my garden. But I am hoping to start some for a farmer's market. And I also have a ton of peppers that I need to start yet. And so grow space under the lights is really limited. And I think it's really important to just use that space in the best way possible, if that makes sense. And I really don't see a benefit to having the sweet potatoes under that space anymore. So thank you for everyone who kind of followed this experiment. And I'll keep you updated as these slips start to grow roots and how we plant them. Last year, we did our sweet potatoes right in the ground. We have very, very sandy soil. We did put some composted cow manure on it. And I think that helped, but it was really difficult when it came to digging up our sweet potatoes last year because we did a no-till method. And I think that impacted our yield a little bit just because the soil was so compact because it had been a field for years and years and years at Hayfield. So what we're gonna do this year just for the sweet potatoes is put them in a raised bed. That's our plan right now. We have not built the bed yet. So obviously that's tentative and subject to change. But what we'd really like to do is build a raised bed this year to put the sweet potatoes in only for ease of harvesting because our soil is so compact. And until we can build soil, which takes time, having a raised bed for sweet potatoes would really, I think, be beneficial. We will do another video on how we grow potatoes and we grow those on the ground and it is beautiful but it just did not work as well for the sweet potatoes last year. So we are gonna go ahead and do a raised bed. And I think that's some of the joy of gardening is learning what works well with some things and what works well with others. I love growing the sweet potatoes because they are something that's beautiful and the vines are just gorgeous, I think. And my husband loves Sweet potato, sweet potato fry, sweet potato hash, all of that stuff. I think you should have been born in the South. Um, so getting to experiment and figure out the best way for us to grow it in our soil, in our climate, has really been fun for us. One thing that we will do here, as soon as we get that bed built, is cover it with like a black either tarp or landscaping fabric or plastic or something so that the sun absorbs the heat into that soil because the warmer that soil is when I go ahead and plant out my slips, the better our sweet potatoes are going to go grow, excuse me, especially in the short growing season that we have here in zone four. And really, like if you look at some of the like Farmer's Almanac Garden Planner, it has no suggestions for planting sweet potatoes in this climate, which I don't know if that means we're not supposed to, but I don't know. If you don't plant any, you definitely won't get any. So we just try um, and we like to break the rules a little bit and see how things work out. So thanks for hanging out with me today and sharing in the sweet potato experiment. Keep experimenting, keep trying new things and keep growing. Have a great day.